Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation, and I would like to discuss with you the use of IV stilbestrol diphosphate. I'm being asked so many times about patients, what is the basis for my clinical work when I used to be in practice using infusion of estrogen? The subject of infusion of estrogen was done over many decades and it was used in Europe and in the United States. The problem was that the infusion was for a period of time, continuous infusion of four hours, the shortest one, or for a day or for a few days. And I came across an article in the Clinic of North America in 1991. The article was in a volume that discussed advanced prostatic carcinoma and the name of the article was Use of Intravenous Stilbestrol Diphosphate in Patient with Prostatic Carcinoma Refractory to Conventional Hormonal Manipulation. And I was amazed because I found about it in 1996. And the author was Michael Arthur Ferro. And I found his address and I went to England and I went to visit his clinic to try to see exactly what is it doing there with the infusion of stilbestrol, which is a form of estrogen. So let's go now and discuss this article. Stilbestrol uh, was available since 1946. It's a biologically inactive estrogen. It is water soluble and can therefore be injected IV in a very large dose and it has a direct cytotoxic, cytotoxic effect on prostate cancer cell. It was originally postulated that large doses of estrogen might be effective where low dosage had failed or where the carcinoma had developed resistance to androgen withdrawal therapy. Low dose oral estrogen exerts their effects through the pituitary testis axis there is substantial experimental and clinical evidence that high dose has a direct cytotoxic effect on the prostatic cell carcinoma. Patients that were relapsing after primary hormonal therapy are a group in whom pituitary texas, testis axis is irrelevant to any further suppression of prostatic carcinoma by high dose estrogen therapy because testosterone production is already maximally suppressed and the carcinoma is no longer androgen dependent. So I went to England and I tried to find out what kind of treatment is he doing because here is the treatment protocol in the article itself. Patients require admission to the hospital for the duration of the therapy. Still bestrol diphosphate is being given by intravenous injection in a dose of 1104 milligram, four vials of 285 milligram over five minutes, once or twice a day. This regimen produced plasma DS level greater than one microgram for as long as two hours. And what's so interesting to me is that this was given over five minutes, but I was curious to know what were the results? The average duration of the response to a single seven-day course of therapy in those patients with a correspondent foreign PSA level was 3.8 plus 1.6 month. The duration of subjective improvement in this patient without a fall in marker level averages only two months. So the point is this, here is a treatment that can be given by IV short period of time, once or twice a day for one week. What I learned from Dr. Ferro, Michael Ferro, is that you don't even have to give the infusion over five minutes, you could even do it by IV push. So when I came back to the state, I had a number of patients that I did this treatment as palliation to avoid the pain. And I saw that this treatment is much better than giving the people narcotics or give them any other toxic medication. And even patients in 
hospices could get this treatment for one week and then they would get some benefit for weeks and months and that's why I think we have to resurrect this type of treatment. It was very non-expensive at that time when I used it and it's a good treatment because the fear of side effects of blood clots actually did not happen. I talked to Dr. Ferro. The fact that we injected it into the vein and not gave it by mouth, it bypassed the mechanism of absorption of not going through the liver. When you swallow by mouth, the medication, the estrogen are absorbed through the liver and then you get blood clots. But when you give it parenterally, either by patches or by injection or by infusion, then you could get a very good treatment that does not have the side effect of blood clots and cardiovascular events. Uh, in parallel, we have used um, estradiol valerate at UCSD clinic. We had it and we used monthly shots instead of Lupron in patients that could not afford it. So I think the estrogens are dangerous medication, but you have to know how to give it. And if you give it parenterally, it has an advantage. And I think it's the easiness of giving it a shot once a month or giving it by infusion for one week beats the problem with taking it by patches. It's much more expensive. It's difficult to guarantee absorption and it falls off the skin. Thank you for listening. For further information, please call our foundation uh, or get on our website www.pcrev.org or send us an email at info dot pcrev.org. Thank you for listening and I hope you join me on Ask Dr. Bark and Call in Show every Tuesday evening 6 p.m. Pacific time. The number to call is 1-877-727-3301 or get on our website www.pcrev.org and click on the left side you'll see a link so you could listen to the audio streaming of the show or download the shows by looking at past shows or get on the iTunes and find Dr. Barkin, ask Dr. Barkin Colin Show. Thank you for listening. I wish all of you to stay well, stay informed and enjoy. Bye-bye.